Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now in the past I've done a full comprehensive review on the stamp wheel from Altenew and all the amazing unique features you can do with it. I think it's super cool and I promised kind of a follow up video that would cover a lot of the questions you had and some of the new products that Altenew has released to make the stamp wheel even better. Everything that I cover in today's video will be listed in links down below and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Also down there is a link to the first video that I did that explains a lot more about the stamp wheel in depth because Today we're just jumping into some of the newer features. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with some of the basics, I'm going to remove the top lid and I'm going to place my cardstock right into my stamp wheel. I'm using the grid lines that I created in the last video to line it up right in the center. Then to do my stamping, I'm gonna use the Build a Garden Daffodil Delight stamp from Altenew. I love these different florals that you have in here. And I'm going to use this larger floral cluster, so peel it off the backing sheet and then we can position it however we want to on the front of our cardstock. So I'm just going to position it kind of hanging a little bit off the edge on our card here. Then I'll go in with the top plate, place it down to lift up the stamp. And then to ink this up, we just flip it over, place it right back in, and this gives us a good surface to ink. I'm gonna use a little bit of VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink to get a really great stamped impression that is jet black and it captures all of the amazing detail. So we'll just go in and ink this up. And the first thing that I wanted to show, which a lot of you guys had questions about, is when we flip this over, if it doesn't necessarily lock into any of the grooves, but yet you drop it on or you don't get it lined up perfectly, it's not going to stamp right away. There was a lot of questions about that. But really the key here is that only until you get it into this place is it actually low enough to do the stamped impression. So don't worry, once it locks into these grooves, then it will stamp. But if it's above the grooves and it doesn't lock in quite perfectly, you're still good, it's not gonna stamp down until you get it down. Now I also wanted to point out that in case you don't get the stamped impression perfect the first time, we can go back in and re-ink to get a better impression. We'll flip it. And also these little notches are pretty tight, especially at the beginning. They loosen up a little bit over time so that it's easier to use. But I like that they're nice and tight because it makes it so that when you press it in that same spot, it's not going to make the image any bolder because it's stamping right in the same spot every time. All right, so then we can lift that off the photopolymer base and there is our beautiful stamped impression. Now I also wanted to share that I've been using this photopolymer base for quite some time after the review and this thing is still very nice and sticky to keep using and it still holds down the cardstock perfectly every time so it hasn't lost any of its stick. And then if you need to clean up any of the ink from the surface, all you do is spray it down using a little bit of water and I'm just gonna go in with a lint-free cloth like a paper towel and wipe it off. Now some inks may stain this surface, but that's totally okay because it's a tool, so if it stains, don't worry about it, it'll still work perfectly fine. Next I wanted to talk about some of the products that work really well inside of the stamp wheel and some of the questions you guys had about them. So first off, lots of you guys were talking about the Concord 9th Turnabout Stamps. So I picked out the Happy Rays Turnabout Stamp and I wanna see how it works inside of the stamp wheel and then I'll carefully peel out the large turnabout portion of this stamp. All the turnabouts have this clear acetate sheet that is sort of works as a guide. So it says this side up, which we're going to place down on our surface, and then we're going to grab the photopolymer stamp and line it up with the guide exactly. So we're just going to place the stamp down on the guide and make sure that everything is in place. And once that is good, we can then go in with the top plate of our stamp wheel. And there's a little X in the center, which is gonna make it really helpful for lining this up. So all we need to do is line up that little X in the center there, and then we'll place everything down so that it lines up perfectly. Then we can peel off our guide, and I'll just place this down even more on the surface to get rid of any air bubbles. And also, since there's such solid areas in the stamp, you want to just prime the stamp. And so to do so, I'm just going to rub my fingers over top of the surface. You'll see it gets a little bit cloudier as I do this, because the oils from your finger will help remove some of the chemicals on the stamp and make it stamp a little bit clearer. Now again, you want your paper directly in the center, and Altenew also created something called the Stamp Wheel Center Alignment Guides, and these are super helpful. So of course you could do something like I did with guidelines underneath your sticky mat, but this has four different size plastic pieces. So you have a couple different ones that are going to create a square, and you have the 4.25 by 5.5, which is going to create that A2 size card. So all you need to do is place this right in the corner of your stamp wheel, super easy to do. And then we'll go in and place our cardstock right down into that corner, slot it in, and then place it down. And now you know everything is perfectly centered. 
then we can just peel this right out. So that's a really great guide as well to see if things are centered. And I love that there's several different sizes of it too. My lines are actually a little bit off compared to it. So it's super helpful to have those center alignment guides. So for the stamp, I'm gonna go in with some Simon Hurley Create inks. I'm starting off with a little bit of yellow, shooting star. I'm gonna use some nice warm tones and I'll just ink up our stamp but I'm just going to lock it into these corners and then we'll place this down and give it some good pressure to make sure that all of the image transfers. All right, so there we go. That's the first stamped impression, pretty good. All right, now we can easily go in and clean the stamp off just using a little bit of water since these are water-based dye inks. And then next I'm gonna go in using orange, which is a little bit of guppy ink from my line. So again, just ink this up all the way around. All right, so this is where it started and now we're going to rotate it a quarter turn so when this turns back into an X, we know that we're good. Then we can lock it down in those corners and then give it some good pressure to make sure that our image transfers. Then we can lift it off and there we have our second stamped impression. And then like I said, if we need to, we can stamp it over in the same spot to make sure that we get a great impression. Perfect. Next, I'm gonna go in using Prom Queen, which is this beautiful pink color. And again, ink up the stamp. And then again, this is where it was. And now we can rotate it until once again, we get an X to get a really crisp and solid impression. And there we go, our third turn. So for our last turn, I'm gonna use Love Struck, which is this sort of berry red color. I'm gonna go in and ink up the rest of our stamp for the last turn. And then again, we'll turn it one last time until we see that X again. And then it lines up perfectly in place for the last turn there. And then we can place it down and give it some good pressure to stamp everything in place. And when we lift it off, check out that beautifully stamped impression. You can lift that out of here. And honestly, I'm super shocked and very impressed by the results that we had inside of the stamp wheel using the turnabout stamps. I've tried using the turnabout stamps in the Misty in the past, and I've had mixed results with getting them lined up perfectly on all four turns. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult, but with this one, having the marking in the center of the acrylic block on top, and also the marking on the packaging, made it super easy to line up right in the center. Those centering guides were super helpful to get everything on track to have a super successful turnabout stamp. So if you have quite a few of the turnabout stamps and you struggle with them, or sometimes you don't always get the perfect impression, the stamp wheel might be a great option for you because that was super easy. And then again, to clean it, I'll just go in, spray it down, and wipe it off with some paper towel or lint-free cloth. And again, if you're using the inks that usually stain, it might stain, but my inks wipe off beautifully from here. Now I love the stamp set because you can fill it in with either the faces of the sun, the so nice to know you sentiment, and then there's tons of different sentiments you can use in the center. I happen to love this one that says you did it. The font is amazing and I love how encouraging it is. So I'm going to line up the you did it sentiment right in the front and center of these sun rays. Once we got it lined up, we can place down our acrylic block to pick it up right in the center. Flip our plate. And then we'll stamp it down using some Jet Black Nocturne ink again to get a really great crisp and jet black image. Flip it over and stamp it down on our cardstock. I absolutely love how this card turned out with that super simple yet bold and stunning background that we stamped and just how easy it was to create using the stamp wheel to make sure that everything was lined up absolutely perfectly. This is such a great encouragement card and I can't wait to send it out. For this next card, I'm gonna use the Delightful Day stamp set from Altenew. And this one is a layering stamp set, but it's a little bit unique in the fact that it works really well with the stamp wheel. So it's got four of the stamp layers on one stamp and for the leaves as well, which is gonna make it really easily for layering with rotation. So let's start off here with this large rose image. I'm going to peel it off the packaging very carefully to make sure it doesn't stretch. All right, then I wanna center my cardstock and this is where these layering guides come in especially handy. I'm gonna use the six by six layering guide and a six by six piece of my stark white cardstock. We'll line it up right in the corner there to make sure that everything is nicely lined up. Place it down and then peel out the guide. And that just makes sure that everything is perfectly centered. Now when it comes to lining up the stamp perfectly, there's actually an X right in the center of the stamp, and that's actually part of the stamp. So then I can take the top of my acrylic block for the stamp wheel, and there's an X in that too. So all it takes is for you to line up that X perfectly in the center, and that will align all of the stamps really easily for the rotation. And again, with this stamp set, I'm just gonna go in and rub the surface of the stamp with my finger to make sure that it's nicely primed for any ink that we go in with. It makes such a great noise. 
All right, now let's do the stamping. So I'm going to flip this over so we can ink it up. And for this flower, I'm gonna use different shades of pink. So I'm starting off with my latest pink called Piggyback and we'll ink up the most solid image first. So all I'm doing is putting ink on the solid image and avoiding the other images around it. Super easy to do. Then you can flip it and stamp it down really nice and easily. Perfect. So now I'll go in and clean off this image in between all of the stamping. Then we'll go in and ink up the second most solid image with our next darkest pink color, which is rosy cheeks. This will be the middle tone. I'm just going to ink this up. And if you get any ink on other parts, just wipe it off with your finger. It's no big deal. Then we're going to rotate this. So I'm going to rotate it one fourth, super easy to do. And then we'll lay this right on top and stamp it down. And that fills in the details of the middle layer. And what I love about it is that it just took one rotation. You don't have to be super mindful as if the layer is lining up or where do I put the stamp because I know a lot of people struggle with that. So this really takes the thought process out of stamp layering and creates a beautiful image with no effort. So again, I'll spray this down to clean it off in between layers and then wipe it off. With the most detailed layer, I'm going to go in using a little bit of Prom Queen, which is my darkest pink color. And I'm just going to ink up the detailed layer. All right, then we can flip this over. And again, we're going to rotate it one fourths, and then I'm going to place it down, give it some good pressure, and that darkest layer is going to give you tons of detail there. I love that. Now there's a super detailed layer here, which in the packaging they stamped it using black. So I'm gonna go in using Shady, which is my darkest color of Simon Hurley Create Ink. It's almost a black color, and I'm just going to go in and stamp this most detailed layer, because I don't want it to be as harsh as black, so this will be really pretty. Again, rotate it one fourth, and then go in and stamp it down. So there we have all of the really beautiful layers for that floral, and check out all of the amazing details you get super effortlessly. Now you could skip that last layer if you don't want all those details, if you want more of a painterly look, but I like that it kind of fills everything in and finishes it off. For the next flower, I wanna do it in yellow, so I'm starting off with my lightest sort of buttery yellow color, and I'm gonna go in with Over the Moon and ink this up, and then again, we'll flip it over and stamp it down onto our cardstock. And there is our super pretty lightest layer of our flower. Next, we're gonna go in using Shooting Star, which is our mid-tone yellow color, and I'm going to ink up the second layer of our floral. Then again, we'll flip it over and we'll rotate it 45 degrees. So one fourth turn, and then we'll stamp it right onto our project. Super simple to do, and that fills in the second layer of details. Next, we'll do our third layer of yellow, which is going to be the darkest yellow color that we use. And I'm going to ink it up using a little bit of slippery and wet color. So we'll flip it over and we'll rotate it one fourth turn, lock it into place, and stamp it down onto our cardstock. And that gives our beautiful third layer and tons of detail to that floral. So I love how these flowers turned out. I'm gonna stop at two, but obviously there's room for two more if you wanna keep doing the rotations and do different color roses. I was a little bit skeptical about this idea at first when I saw it in the packaging, but once you actually get it out to try it and use it, it's super easy to do. I love that there's no thought process behind how they layer and how to lay down the stamps because they're already done perfectly for you. And there's enough space in between the stamps so that you don't get ink everywhere. You can just ink up the flower that you want and stamp and rotate. It. Then again, back in with the guides, I'm gonna go in with the 4.25 by 4.25. We'll lay that down, and then I got that square of stark white cardstock in here. We'll place it right down, and then lift off that guide. And now we can do the leaves. So again, I'm going to place this right down onto the surface. Then I'll grab my top acrylic block. Again, line up that line in the center super easily, which is going to make this rotation line up perfectly, and then we can lift it off. All right, this rotation looks a little bit different since they're just a little bit closer to each other. So what I recommend is going in using a little bit of mint tape or some post-it tape. I'm going to rip this in half here and I'm just going to mask off the second area of leaves. And then I'm also going to mask off these leaves just to make sure we don't get any ink or we don't want it. And we're just gonna ink up this section with the two leaves. Now inside of the Ulta New packaging, you get some examples and you also get how to turn these. So if you're a little bit confused at any time, definitely check their packaging. Their packaging is super helpful to get all that information. So I'm gonna start off with a really yellow green. This one is called Psych. And I'm just going to go in and ink up that section with just the two leaves on it. Super easy to do. We'll lift off our masking tape. And then we can go in and stamp this down. Again, wipe it off in between layers so that no ink transfers where we don't want it. Then I'll mask off any of the other sections we don't want inked. 
really easily. And here we'll ink those up using our mid-tone green color called Viper. I'm going to ink them up, lift off our masking paper. Then here we're not going to rotate it one fourth, we're going to rotate it until it turns into an X. And then we're going to line it up, and you can see when it lines up pretty easily, and just stamp it down. And there we have our second layer with a little bit more detail. Then I'll go in using our darkest green color called Thick Plant, ink that up, and here we're going to rotate it even more, and then press that down to line it up. And then again for the last layer, we're gonna go in using a little bit of Shady, which is our darkest gray color, almost black. Then I'll rotate it until it lines up, and stamp it right down onto our image. Perfect. So I went in and repeated those steps again. So now I have two different little clusters of leaves. And again, it was super easy to line those up just by doing the little rotations to get them all lined up accurately. Now there are dies that go along with this set, which will make them really easy to cut out. I don't happen to have them today, so I'm just gonna go in and quickly and easily fussy cut these out. I like to leave a little bit of white border around them so that it makes them easier to cut out and not have to get into all of the tiny little details. And also, I really like these Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. They spring back out at you so your hands don't get tired, and I find that it also helps me get a nice smooth and crisp line across the surface. So if you struggle with fussy cutting, I'll have these linked down below. I find them to be super helpful in case scenarios like this, and they get into the details really well. There we go, those were super easy to fussy cut out. And again, I'm just so obsessed with all of the amazing detail you get in these stamped images without too much effort. Next, let's go in and talk about one of my favorite parts about the stamp wheel, the sticky grid. If you were to take anything away from the stamp wheel, this is one of my favorite innovations that they did on this. There was also a couple questions and confusions about it, so let's jump into that. So when they first sent me mine, they gave me the regular sticky matte grid. And since then, they've also created the ultra sticky matte grid. And I'm pretty sure this is the one that now comes along with the stamp wheels. So you guys will get this extra sticky grid inside of your tool. And I've never tested the ultra sticky mat out, so I want to try this out today and see how it compares to the regular one that I did have. All right, the first thing that I wanna say about this is that it's manufactured just like a regular photopolymer stamp. So when we peel off the clear piece of acetate, this side is actually textured just like a photopolymer stamp would with that grid texture in it, which is pretty cool. Now what this means is you also have a built-in grid stamp along in your photopolymer mat. And to demonstrate this, I thought it would be kind of fun to go in there and do a little bit of stamping. So I'm gonna ink this up using a little bit of that same shady ink, which is a really great dark gray color, almost black, and I'll ink up the photopolymer stamp using this ink. Then I'll go in with a mid-tone gray cardstock and I'm just going to place this onto the surface of my photopolymer stamp and I'm going to use my pressure tool to make sure that this all transfers beautifully. So that when we lift this off you get that beautiful stamped grid texture on your cardstock. So that's one thing I love about this. I wanted to demonstrate kind of how it was just like a normal photopolymer stamp but also how you can use it as a stamp because I think that grid texture is pretty cool for a geometric background. Before we get too far into the mat, I wanna create a card using this. So I've cut it on a diagonal to add some interest and I'm just going to add this background panel on the bottom of a top folding A2 size card. Then I've lined up my florals and I'm going to place them down onto the card using a little bit of foam tape. And then I'm going to tuck my leaves right underneath following that same line of the cardstock. I've chopped off some of these leaves and same thing here, I'm going to slip these underneath the pink flower on the other side. And I love how this card turned out. Those really beautiful layering flowers that were so simple to create yet so stunning. And finishing it off with that grid background using the sticky mat. Who would have thought you would be able to stamp using that mat and create such a beautiful, gorgeous geometric design. I love how stunning this card turned out. All right, now back to the grid mat. Now on this side of the grid mat, there's actually a black grid on top of the acetate. And this is where a lot of the confusion came in. You're actually supposed to peel off this grid. It says it in the instructions. This grid is just printed on there because that's how the manufacturing happens. If you think about a stamp set, there's a black index on the front. The same thing applies to this. It's just an indexing on what the stamped image is. So just like the instructions say, I'm going to end up peeling this off, but if you want to be resourceful and use this in different ways, you totally can. That grid can be helpful for lots of different things inside your craft room. So just slowly and gently peel it off so that not too much stretching happens of the photopolymer. 
And I do have to say, I can already tell this mat is a lot stickier. So I'm thinking they probably went to their manufacturer and talked to them about curing the stamp because if you cure the stamp less, it's probably a little bit stickier. And this one is extremely sticky, which I can only imagine it's going to keep it stick for a lot longer too. Now when you're using this inside the stamp tool, the textured grid side goes down and the flat side goes up so that that side can cling to more things on the surface. But I wanted to also mention that if you're not using this inside your stamp wheel, let's say you don't think that the stamp wheel is necessarily in your budget, but you still think that this photopolymer mat is super cool, you could buy this sticky grid mat on its own, place it down on your work surface just like this, It'll stick nicely to your work surface, and then you can use this just like this. To demonstrate how this works, I'm gonna use the beautiful Journey Abroad stencil. This is a new one from Altenay, which creates such a gorgeous Moroccan design. So with these layering stencils, they have etched on them different numbers as to what layer to use. So I'm gonna start off with layer one, and starting off, I'm going to place my cardstock right down onto the surface to stick it in place. And yeah, that's got a really great grip on the cardstock. It's not gonna move. And then I'll go in using my stencil, and place it right down onto the surface. And when it comes to using the sticky mat, you want there to be extra stencil hanging off the edges so you can really place the stencil down into the mat and get it nice and gripped on the surface so that it's not going to move around. I'm gonna go in using a bit of red ink on my blending brush from Altenew. I love these big stencil brushes because they cover a lot of surface area at once. So I'm just going to go in using a little bit of Love Struck, which is that kind of pinkish red color, and I'm going to blend across the whole surface really super easily. And like I said, check out how much surface area that covers at once. It makes blending a smooth background super simple to do. And then once we got our ink down, we can actually go in with the cloth while it's still on the surface and just wipe this down. It helps to clean off the stencil because you're just wiping the ink back onto the cardstock in those areas. And then we'll go in and peel our stencil off the surface. You can see how nice and stuck down it is so it's not shifting as you're stenciling. Next I'm going in with layer two of the stencil and you can see exactly where it lines up. It just fills in some of those open areas. And here I'm going to go in using the yellow blending brush and go in using a little bit of slippery and wet. And I have a couple of these blending brushes, one for each sort of color family. So that you're using similar colors on each blending brush and you don't have to clean it in between each use because cleaning these would be kind of a pain. So this makes them really easy to use just by having one for each different color family. We'll lift this off once it's complete and it's starting to fill in the design really beautifully. So next I'll go in using the third layer. We can sort of start lining it up. And again, it's easy to line up because it just starts to fill in more of those areas. I'm going to place it down and again, stick it on the edges to make sure that it's nice and in place. Here I'm gonna use a little bit of no diving, which is this beautiful mid-tone blue color and I'm gonna go in using the blue blending brush. Now another reason I really like to use these blending brushes as well is because when you have lots of points and different small areas and stencils like this, sometimes foam blending tools don't necessarily get into all of those details and they kind of round out some of the edges. So by using all the little bristles on a blending brush, it gets into those areas and covers all of the details, which I love. So I'm going to go in, peel this layer off once it's complete and it's starting to really fill out so beautifully. So you can leave it just like this if you want to, but I think I'm going to fill in this last area as well. So I'll just go in, place it all down. And for the last color, I'm gonna go in using Crown Me, which is this gorgeous, deep, rich, and vibrant purple color. Check that out. It's such a beautiful addition to this background. And you can really see that this stencil mat is kind of a one-handed job. It sticks down so well that it's not moving, it's not shifting, and you don't have to kind of hold it down with your hand either. It sticks down really nicely to the surface of this mat. So this was super innovative by Altenew. I love the concept of this photopolymer mat. I'm gonna lift it off. Our background is complete. Check out how beautiful that design is. You can definitely lift it off pretty easily without ripping your cardstock or anything like that, but it definitely has more tack than the first mat that I tried, which is awesome. And check out all of the amazing details inside of that blended stencil background. And there also happens to be a hot foil plate that coordinates that does all the line details and foiling, which I'll have linked down below as well so you can check it out. And then again, to clean this mat, spray it down using a little bit of water and then go in with a lint-free cloth or paper towel to wipe off all the ink from the surface. If your ink's usually stained, they might stain this mat, so be aware of that. 
But once all the water evaporates off this mat, it's super nice and sticky again, and it's ready to use. Now when you're done using this mat, if it's inside of the stamp wheel, it should be perfectly fine. But if you wanna keep all the dust and debris, if you're not using it inside of a stamp wheel, just go back in with one of those acetate sheets and stick it down to the surface to keep it away from dust and protect it from debris. Now here's a little word of advice. Some stencils have a little coating on the back of it and this mat is so sticky it might rip the coating. So if your stencil looks a little bit matte on one side, test it out and if it peels off the coating, then stick to using the glossy side, which might be the opposite side of the stencil that you're used to using. All right, you guys, so I hope that answered all of your different questions about the Ultimate New Stamp Wheel and about some of the new products that work really well inside of it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and leave me comments down below letting me know your thoughts and opinions about the stamp wheel and some of the questions I answered in today's video. Also remember, down there is a full supplies list to everything that I used and using those links helps support me, so I really appreciate it. You can also get the next round of stamp wheels down there. They're on pre-order right now, so you'll get the next batch once they arrive. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and I'll See you all soon in another card baking and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.